ladies and gentlemen, some more breaking news here. Haken Chanaloglu has made his way to Salford City. The move comes for a £650,000 fee from Manchester United. He's moved to Manchester, wants to live in sort of the better area. So he's made the move to Salford and he's very happy with his move. Uh, Manager Dr Benji, we've got reports here. Manager Dr Benji, delighted with the moves. Free kick taking is a specialist, uh, is a special subject at Salford and uh, Hakan will certainly be able to contribute more to that and we will bring you more breaking news when we have apparent we've got it we've got it. some more breaking news coming through right now the Scottish international Ryan Gould making his way to Salford City I mean absolutely unbelievable since so Ryan Gould making his way and we, we, we little little information at this point of Ben Sports News really it's a shock transfer that we weren't expecting but uh, apparently is happening so uh, yeah sorry that we can't give you more details on this at this point as what sorry more pre We've got, okay, more breaking news. Uh, Daniel Phillips, the libero, has come in. Apparently, he's made the move to Salford in, in, a, in a triple switch. Uh, Salford very active in the transfer. Kevin, someone help! I'm not prepared for this! I, what at a time! What at a bloody time! I'm not... Transfers have happened. I, uh, we're back on the air and it's too much pressure all at once! I've, I've been, not been here for ages! <laughs> got my agent. Yes, my mum's my agent. For any more reports, join us back here. Best Sports News. <laughs> so yes, since last episode, things have progressed somewhat our squad looks a little bit different and uh some some incomings as you now are aware hakan chanaloglu i think that's how you say his name it's very close to that anyway uh the turkish international 100 caps for turkey 33 now has had, uh, had an interesting career psg if like madrid a spell at uh, manchester united which didn't really come to anything and we've picked him up for 650k i mean We've had a free kick specialist at the club for some time. We now have another one. Not quite to the standards of Andy Tanoy, but uh, Channel Ogley will probably provide something a little bit different. And uh, due to our injuries at the attacking midfield position, we needed to bring a guy in that, that could do that job. And we didn't just bring in one, we brought in two. Now, many of you will be familiar with Ryan Gould, uh, one of the sort of wonder kids at the start of the game for the last few football managers. Um, we've brought him in. He can play on the left, he can play centrally, he can play further forward, all naturally. And I think that's the key thing for us here. Uh, has had a, a very much a Premier League career. Lots of transfers. Hasn't really settled anywhere. Um, at the ripe old age of 32 then he comes to us and I'm hoping that a man like Ryan Gould will produce magical moments uh, he, he's got it in him and I'm hoping that's what he does advanced playmaker is where we're going to play him and it's his most suited role and will arguably be within the team or will be, will be in the team as soon as we get going one more Daniel Phillips then and I love players like this I, I mean the players have signed ability wise aren't that great but I absolutely adore players like this he could play up front on the left midfield central midfield across the back line and his, his main role libero I mean we could all get on board with the libero surely i certainly can and um, he doesn't look amazing but he looks okay and he's, he's worth a little bit of money so if it doesn't work out we can move him on for uh, for a small profit i hope uh, history wise again being at manchester united and not really featured had a couple of successful loan spells but really hasn't been playing a great deal of football another phillips i can't get enough of them um we, we, we've got philip or phillips all over the place at this point peters and phillips are rife so then today we are going to conclude things uh, within the transfer window like it's not been going well I basically moved forward from the end of the Everton game to the forward point of the Burnley game and we're going to kick things off with that game still transfers can be made and will likely be made uh, another defender I think we still need as a priority maybe another striker a little bit hit and miss on that right now uh, and it's going to depend on a few of the outs as well we're certainly going to get bids so uh, let's see what goes down 10, ga uh, 10 days to go let's hope it goes well we're going to kick things off against Burnley who are in fourth tricky now we've signed a couple of attacking midfielders I did go in for another one at Chelsea uh, called Valet and I don't think we're actually going to bring him in due to the fact we've got in Channel Oglu and Gould I kind of envisage getting one of those in and then maybe a guy like Gerson Valet but um no, I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna leave it. He's a decent decent player, but he's not really gonna improve us much more than we are already. So, uh, I'm sorry, mate, I've lied. It would have been two hundred grand a month as well. So yeah, best to leave that. Liverpool want cost off again? No, not yet. End of the season, you can have for free. Our league form recently has been well, it's been horrendous. We haven't won a match in six, and uh, yeah, it, it's been a long time. It's been the, oh, the beginning of oh dear, the beginning of December. Not good. Olympiakos are gonna sign cost off. Liverpool, you missed your opportunity. Uh, he's going to Olympiakos then at the end of the season. Season, which is fine we'll bring in a new backup goalkeeper and um, we almost went in for Baron Cummins you might remember from last episode we haven't actually signed him uh, and I don't think we're going to we've got a lot of depth in that middle so we don't need to bring anyone else in 
Okay, and this is the team for the first game against Burnley. Ryan Gould's going to come in. I was going to play Tom Longley, but I think Gould's probably a better option. Uh, Peter on the right, Barry on the left, Vidal and Villalba in the middle. Playing him in a slightly defensive role again. Rekic, Jao Paulo and Fankhauser. Uh, Sandoval, Sandoval and Seri. I nearly got it wrong. Sandoval and Seri up top. And uh, yeah, we need a win today, boys. It's been a while. Playing a 4-4-2. And Chris Hansen's up front. Hmm, with Dateline NBC. Okay, then the games begin. We have a league table. We have the match stats. It's all going very well. If anything happens, I will let you know. But again, this is more of a sort of back end of January transfer episode. So, uh, if anything occurs, I will be the first to tell you. No one else is going to tell you before me. Let's, let's be sure. Don't go to other videos thinking, oh, will we find out there? You won't find out there. You'll only find out here. Got a little cup of coffee. It's a bit weird. Ugh, I'm alive. Half time. Absolutely nothing. Let's get aggressive. We owe Burnley after last time. I've got no idea what happened last time. I never do. I never remember. Really, it should say when they beat you 3-2 or when they beat you 1-0. Corner for Burnley. Whipped in. Had a clear. So far... A very dull game. Sandoval running at goal. I mean, he's sort of on his own here. Is he going to? Well, I was going to say he's going to find a pass. But shot, uh, shot on goal wide. Still even here. As a corner comes in, we'll stay with it while it happens. Ryan Gould to whip it in, and uh, it's cleared all the way to Seri. Heads it back in and clear. That's probably going to be that. Okay, Eckhart's going to come on for Vidal in the uh, the box to box midfield role. I might do something a little bit radical. We're going to put Ryan Gould up there on the left side and play two left wingers, and then look for the overlap. I mean, this is this is weird. I just think I don't know. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm gambling with 20 minutes to go because I want a goal. I'm gonna go attacking as well. Okay, left side. Gould's gonna put it in. Does put it in. Said he's there. Said he. Oh, he smashes it home. Salford one, Burnley nil, and a win that we absolutely needed. The ball whipped in by Ryan Gould. A fantastic delivery, and Seri prods home. Let's look at it in three dimensions. So you can see here, Ryan Gould with the yellow ball whips it in. Oh, the defender misses his header. Said he with one touch with his left foot bangs it home with his right foot. In off the bar, if anything, as well. And uh, yeah, we take a lead. 15 minutes to go. Hold on. Yeah, Maki Paki high up to Sandoval. Plays it to Seri. He's got runners. Can he slip through Eckert? He does. Oh, it's saved by the goalkeeper. But we're applying a bit of pressure. Not long to go. Time to go defensive. So with five seconds left to go, our first win in seven. Well, this will be in seven games. It's our first win. And there it is. Salford won. Burnley nil. And a league win for the first time in too long. We'll take it. Where does that put us up to? I said that's really special, winning against Burnley. Keeps us in seventh place. And a little gap uh, above Hull in eighth. So two more games to go. Hull is, in fact, one of those. And we'll, uh, we'll move forward to see if anything happens before the next one. Okay, FA Cup. Cup fifth round draw. Uh, I don't think we've played yet. No, we have Chelsea coming up in the FA Cup fourth round. Okay, let's see. If we beat Chelsea, who do we get? That's the big question. And we will get uh, Southampton. Southampton away. So Peter Phillips against his former club, now playing for his previous former club, his home club. Uh, so yeah, if we beat Chelsea, we'll go against Southampton. Um, I don't know if we'll show you the Chelsea game. That'll be in an upcoming episode, I assume. This is a player we looked at but didn't sign because he wanted a big wage. Uh, he's on £35,000 uh, a week at Palmeiras. We wanted him. He wanted like 80 grand. So I don't know what changed apart from the fact he was in the Premier League. Uh, he was the guy we went after to replace either Ntobo or Peter Phillips for the remainder of the season. We didn't get him. He went back to, uh, back to Brazil, to Palmeiras. And uh, yeah, the one that got away, you could say, Flavio. Disappointing. You can see there, he's a provider. I mean, we wanted a provider. But no, not, not for 80 grand a week we didn't. You've got, you've got to be really special to be worth that much. The match is out for three weeks. Well, I've put him in the 21s and I was trying to sell him. It looks like at the end of the year he'll be moving on. But um, yeah, okay. So we have 24 million left to spend. And it's really a case of do we want to spend it now or do we want to keep it? Not try and plunge the club into debt, which is a concern of mine. Obviously, spending over 9 million will put us back into a debt. And uh, for some, for whatever reason, we're losing money. I think it's due to the fact we're having to pay back uh, stadium costs and things like that. And obviously, facilities have been upgraded. We're having to deal with those funds. So uh, hopefully, we can avoid that. And again, it's unlikely we'll spend. But if a loan deal's right, we may well bring one in. You can see, I don't think we've got a great deal of loans. Only a couple there. Um, so yeah, who knows what might happen. Another loan is in the offing. Interestingly, the top two players available in the loan list are is a left back and a right back. Obviously, two positions we're currently without. It would be a change in system, but I don't know. Is it better to have those options going into the final few games? How much do they want? Twenty nine grand for six months and ninety one thousand a week. It's not that much. Two hundred grand a month. We're going to try and get these boys in. A double loan deal then. Lionel Martinez, uh, Quarta, Quarta, Quarta. Quarta. It's weird to say with your mouth. And Braga from Barcelona. I don't know. This wage could be a lot bigger. 30 grand. Not that much. 190 grand a month. We'll take that. We'll, okay. Two loan deals. Maybe going to bring them both in. 
it just gives us another option defensively, which we don't have currently, and something that we probably do need. A lot of people say, oh, maybe switch to the four at the back. Maybe it'll be a little bit more fruitful. And you may well be right. So we'll have to try that today. Uh, Stoke, though, we play today, and then we'll see what happens with the loan deals in just a moment. Uh, let's run you through the team. Only one change, then, in this side, uh, from the side that won our last game against Burnley. Uh, Kovacs is going to come in and replace Rekic. Uh, obviously, he's on loan right currently, but he's going to play for us alongside Jao Paulo and Frank Kauser. The rest of the team remains the same. Vilalba, Vidal, Barry, Gold, uh, Sandoval, and Sedi up top. Hopefully, again, another the win let's get ourselves on a bit of a run there's the first goal then Stoke took a 1-0 lead uh, Hamid Loar I think that's how you'd say it has gone through and scored 1-0 Stoke not good 10 minutes gone and uh, again we're up against it I must say 22 minutes in and we are not in this game whatsoever Kovacs his first bit of defending for us wow well he was he was ghosted past there uh, yeah it's been a bit underwhelming so far I guess a chance for us here Vidal plays it up to Seri I mean we'll stick with this and see where it goes uh, Vilalba with it now he's got a couple of options ahead of him Ryan Gould on it slips it through to Seri cut out though Hughes Mason gets there and uh, that seems to be the attack over well, from the highlight I just showed you, that Stoke have been on the attack. We came back on the attack, and it's finally been put out. I thought something was going to happen. It made me talk. Barry with a throw in. And, uh, yeah, if this develops, you'll hear about it. So I'll be like, goal! Goal! So he scored from that attack. Barry with a throw in deep and a half. Works it all the way up the pitch into Barry. And so he headed in. Let's look at it in three dimensions so you can see what I mean. Barry on this left side. Takes on his defender. Sees Seri lurking in the middle. Chips it up towards him. And Seri, we know how dead he can be from there. Heads home and makes it 1-1. Back in the game. I love that we have a minus one goal difference. I love. I, for some reason, I absolutely love it. Oh, well. Stoke have scored from an impossible angle. I'm going to show you this in three dimensions because I can't believe it from 2D. So they're out on this right-hand side. The ball is put to the back of back posts. And Udren, from there, heads it to the other corner, posting in. And it's 2-1 Stoke just before half-time, a killer blow. So at half-time... We're going to get angry. It worked. Okay, quick double change. Ekka and Thomas are going to come on. And we might move God up to this left side again. It worked in the first game. Let's try it again. Look for the overlap. Exploit the left flank. I mean, we got a goal last time. You might as well try it. We'll go attacking structured for the final 10 minutes. See if we can nab one. We've got two players on the left. They break down the right with so much space. Neither of them track back. Kovacs has got to make the challenge and doesn't park with a save. About five minutes left to go. This left side worked something. Last actions of the game, then Thomas with the ball in, cleared as far as Sandoval, it hurts with it, I mean if we're going to score it's got to happen now, back out to Jeff Thomas, ball into the middle, we know this is our final chance, and I mean what has Jeff Thomas done there? It's a poor ball out and Jeff Thomas is back on it, ball played in, Seddy's there, oh my good grief, Seddy again at the double, 15th of the season, I love this man, 2-2, two -two. I mean here it is in two dimensions, Eckhart plays it out to Jeff Thomas, I thought the chance was over, I thought it was just going to be a dull uh, end to the game, the ball plays in, Seddy on the volley this time, and it's 2 to in the final moments ah yes 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 the irony being we pushed the left side and it came from the right two to it ends then uh we, we stay on beating for a couple of games which is nice and uh one more game against Hull to wrap things up i'm not sure at this point if any more transfers are going to be made obviously we had the ones at the start of the episode but i don't know if there'll be any more okay so our two loan signings both about their work permits turned down uh we'll appeal both and hopefully by the end i mean when's the when's the when do we get when do we find out we don't know we don't, we've got no idea Okay, we find out both of them on the 29th, which is tomorrow. The same day we play Hull. I'm now worried that I won't be able to register these players. I don't have a lot of English players. People have been pointing it out. You're right. Okay, they've both been granted, just like that. It's where time flies when you're having fun. Uh, we'll accept both then. A couple of fullbacks coming in. Might be a bit of a costly thing to do, despite the fact we don't actually play with fullbacks. But if we need to change things up, if it, if it comes to that, if some of our centre-backs pick up injuries, I mean, we've been lucky so far this season that they haven't, we have now a backup plan and a solid backup plan at that. Playing two untried talents at fullback. In terms of star rating, both three and a half star. Both look good. Uh, now, registration. Ah, bollocks. So we can register neither of them. A jet steer has to be registered. I mean, Fidel doesn't have to be registered. You have to be registered. Does anyone else not have to be registered? Do we unregister Formiga because we never actually play him? Oh, I feel bad for Formiga at this point. Obviously, the big question is, do we unregister Andy Tanoi and then we don't allow him that final game which he wants so badly? Tanoi gets his game. Those are the rules. Adam Hansen. Oh, oh, do we drop one of the strikers? This is the big question. I think Formiga takes the bullet. That's just the way it's got to be. Formiga out then, so we can get him in. <laughs> I mean, that's our situation. I'm not happy with myself, but it's the situation. Formiga. We'll meet again. As I drop him down to the, <laughs> the abyss that is the reserves. 
Okay then, game today, and we're going to make one change. Gould out, uh, channel log glue in, obviously we win the last game, so we're going to try and switch, uh, switch things up just as such. Funkhauser, Jao Paulo, Kovacs at the uh, defence, Peter, Barry, Vidal, Villalba, uh, Sundaral and Seri up top with Hakan, channel log glue, uh, just behind. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It's a, tr it's a tricky name, but I think I've got it nailed. Mikey Parkey, obviously, in goal. Oh, numbers. Numbers are plenty. All the 30s. Okay, whole playing a 4-4-2. Can we get the win? They're currently sitting in 8th place. A win today would keep us comfortably in 6th place, and that's what we're looking for. And by comfortably, I mean a point ahead of Chelsea. Note also that Hull have uh, Bonazzoli. A few people will, will know the name. Speak of the devil. Speak of the bloody devil. Bonazzoli with the goal. Hull 1-0. I just shouldn't mention player names because quite clearly it hates when I do that. Attacking structured for the rest of the game until halftime and I'll probably change it. So at halftime, still 1-0 Hull. Changes can be made. I mean, we've done it in the last few games and to good effect. So uh, it's not over, but we need something more in the second half. Okay, going to make a couple of changes. Uh, a few of these guys have played a lot of football recently. So we're going to get on Stefan Weber. And we're going to bring the harp on for Seddi, who's played a lot of football recently. Got some good goals for us, uh, but it is in need of a rest. So the harp comes on to play alongside some Doval. Can the harp? Can we hear the tune one more time? We haven't heard it at all this season. You can't argue with this goal scoring record. He's the top scorer ever for this team as the ball to the... Good save by Mikey Parkey. How has he done that? Sandoval with the goal. Fires home. Makes it 1-1. It's a ball from Peter right over to the side to Barry, which is knocked back across. And Sandoval has popped it home. You can see here, a high looping ball. Barry heads it back. Uh, Sandoval, I think he has one shot, which is blocked. And then the second one puts it in. Oh, no, it's first time. I thought it was blocked the first time. There it is then. 1-1. Back in it. Again, some good changes. And it's resulted in a goal. Can we grab a winner? No. No, we can't. Uh, as soon as the harp got the ball, blew, blew the whistle. So, fair enough. That brings us to the end then. Uh, an unbeaten episode today. We're not going to play any more games, although there is one more on the final day. Uh, we're not going to do anything on the final day, apart from those loan deals. Nothing else is going to occur. Uh, so, the Watford game will leave out for today. But if you enjoyed today's video, please drop a like on it. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel for me to you. Until next time, I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye. Three games without defeat. Poor title contenders.